So folks, good morning to you, and I certainly thank you for gathering with us as we come together to honor Becky, Becky to me. Uh, there was a time or two she might have called me a name, but I always called her Becky. And uh, to be respected, revered, and always loved, because everything that she did for her students and her staff, she always did with a great degree of love and feeling. So I am happy that we can be together and I think of her brother Bill, who I wish was with us this morning, but I understand the circumstances and I'm glad members of the family are here to represent. So without further ado, we're going to begin the service this morning as we often do with a piece of music that's been requested and that is actually one of Becky's requests in the garden. Good morning. Good morning. My name is David Strobe. I'm the pastor at West Park United Methodist Church where Becky attended. And uh, I want to thank you for giving me the honor to uh, be able to remember her with you today and to celebrate her life. I'd like to begin by uh, praying together with you. Father, we is hard. This is so very hard. Because for as long as we can remember, Becky has been a part of our lives. And her presence was so powerful. Her love was so real and intense. already we miss her. So we pray for your strength and your comfort to be a part of our lives as we move through this time and through the days ahead. And we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite Beth to come and uh, she is going to share with us Psalm 20. Good morning. Everyone here was so special to Becky, and I am sure she is happy that we have gathered this morning to honor her. She had asked me to share at her service. I was hoping it won't be this soon, but the Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We all have a million fond memories of times that we shared with Becky. Um, some of you knew her longer than my 48 year friendship but over the past several months Becky had said to me um, more than a few times you know what I really want people to remember about me is that I live my life doing exactly what I loved I have no regrets how lucky she was to be able to feel that way and how fortunate the countless children and staff under her care during her 50 years of education. Some of us look forward to beginning new hobbies or making travel plans when we retire. Becky was only hoping to get strong enough to get back to her school 
to be a guest volunteer reader for her Broad Street kids. She also wanted to set up a lunch date with the new Broad Street principal so she could fill him in on what he should know about how to run her school. <laughs> oh, Becky. You will always be remembered and forever loved. There is an Emily Dickinson poem that was treasured, and uh, Becky's niece, Jackie, is going to share that with us. called Because I Could Not Stop for Death by Emily Dickinson. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children strove at recess in the ring we pass the fields of gazing grain. We pass the setting sun. Or rather, he passed us. The dews drew quivering and chill. For only gossamer, my gown, my tippet, only tool. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice in the ground. Since then, his centuries, and yet, feel shorter than the day I first surmised the horse's heads were toward eternity. Just want to say I, it's um, awesome that Becky did 50 years in public service and um, just hearing what you just said kind of rung true with me. I think what I learned growing up in this household, you know, because most of our childhood memories are with the guesses. Um, her grand, my grandfather and her both did public service and I ended up in public service and I feel like uh, they spoke for the people that couldn't speak for themselves and I kind of moved through to that in my daily life too and I, I learned that I think from Aunt Becky and from Grandpa Bill in a quiet way. I don't think they were constantly telling me but in a quiet way. I realize that now after all the time she spent and, and meeting everybody in you know, the district that she's in. So. I, it's, um, it makes me happy that it's sad, but it also makes me happy, so thank you. Thank you, Jack. Let me invite you to pray with me again. I'm really thankful, Father, that there are people in our lives who just have an incredible influence that make an impact on us that, that shapes us and molds us and helps us to become even more than we ever thought we would be. Becky was one of those people and, and she didn't just do it with her family. She didn't just do it with her friends, but she did it wherever she was. How do we say thank you for giving us such a wonderful gift? But we do want to say thank you. Because she has made such a profound and lasting impact on the lives of so many people. And so I pray today for her family, her loved ones, her dear friends, all of her colleagues and associates, all of the students, Whose lives that she has touched. We are all better people.
people because of him. May your peace and your comfort rest upon all those who are mourning her passing today. May your strength be with her family. May we remember her with great joy and with gratitude because of all the ways that she's touched our lives. And we thank you for this in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. I want to give uh, you the opportunity to uh, share some thoughts, some memories uh, of Becky. And, and I know that this is, this is a difficult time to be able to do that. But uh, maybe there's somebody here who has uh, something to share. I'm going to invite Corinda to come and uh, share some of her memories. Everyone has a Becky story. There are many, 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 many stories, and this is mine. Becky and I met in the summer of 1972. I had just gotten my first job as a teacher in, in the Richmond School District starting in September. I became aware that there was a chance for me to get my toe wet in the water, and so I took a summer school aid job, and guess who was at the front of the classroom? Becky. She was my supervising teacher that summer, and that began our professional association, which would last many, many, many years. So yes, I retired before her, but then again, almost everybody retired before Becky, because she had her mindset that she would make that 50-year mark. She was determined, and you know, if you know anything about Becky, once she set her mind on a goal, well, that was gonna happen. She set her expectations high. She set them high for all of us. As family, as friends, as colleagues, her expectations were only the standard of excellence and nothing less. She was hard, she was tough, but her heart was the exact opposite. Her heart was the softest heart and the most loving and generous heart that I've ever experienced. So it wasn't very long after our professional relationship started that our friendship followed very quickly. And then it mutated just as quickly into very good friendship. And you know, good friends don't let you do stupid things alone. And we had a lot of those. But I do believe that friends are not a coincidence. No, not at all. A good friend is truly a gift from God. And that's how I think of Becky and I always will. Even after I left New Jersey, many of our phone calls, even when she was ill, would come to the same words. Do you remember the time when, and we would break into giggles like little girls. But we always, always ended those conversations with the same words. I love you, Ren. I love you, Becky. Well, you know we had evolved at that time, way past friendship, but more into sisterhood. I was touched by Becky in my life, and I know you were too. Were, you were too. I will keep Becky's handprint on my heart forever. A friend is meant to come into our lives to bring us priceless lessons and many memories. What did Becky bring to your life? Have you been changed forever by Becky? My favorite Broadway show, and coincidentally one that we saw together, was Wicked. In fact, she believes so strongly in theater that that was part of our outreach to the children of Richmond to take theater groups, and we went to see Wicked together. So in Wicked, there's two very dear friends who are expressing their love for each other. This song is about that, and it tells exactly what I feel. It's called For Good. I have been changed for good, and I think many of us have as well. I love you, Becky. This is a pretty difficult thing. Um, so 
because as Linda said, we all have different stories. I just wanted to share a few memories. Many of you may know me. I've met many very good and special people through Becky or Miss Guest, as I've known her, because I, we were, uh, she was my principal at Indian Avenue School, but it did not end there. Uh, I became a special friend with her, to her. I worked in her as her housekeeper, but a friend also for, I guess, as long as I can remember, especially since we got older. And I spent many, many hours talking with Becky. We shared a lot of stories together. Um, she, she was just so special to me. She, she's told me about her mother's special recipe for her lima bean soup and her obsession with Tom Selleck. We spent many times looking at um, the uh, TV together. We knew how to disagree and agree and still be friends at the end of our conversations. But she was very special to me. And uh, when I talked to her when she was in the uh, we had, we always ended our conversations with, I love you. And I, I, I just could not find the words to, when I heard the news, I, I just had no words, but today I would like to just read this little poem. And it says, God saw you getting tired when a cure was not to be. So he wrapped his arms around you and whispered, come to me. You didn't deserve what you went through, so he gave you a rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He only takes the best. And now I see you sleeping so peaceful and free from pain. I could not wish you back to suffer that again. Lovingly, Miss Linda. Anyone else, memory to share? One of my uh, favorite movies is that old Frank Capra Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life. And I'm sure you've seen it, you remember the story, there's a, a very ordinary guy named George Bailey who has all kinds of great dreams and grand plans about what he wants to do with his life. But those things never come about in the way that he anticipated. And then as he faced some hard times, he began to despair of life and consider throwing it away. And that's when God gave him a wonderful gift. The ability to see what life would have been like had he never lived. And through that experience, he realized his life had not been wasted, but that he had made a significant difference, that his life counted. And so George went back to face his problems with a new perspective and a new attitude. And was able to realize that indeed he did have wonderful life. Now, that's a movie. It's fiction. But you know, you could look at Becky and say, it's been a wonderful life. We are here today to celebrate the wonderful life of Becky Guess. And there's, there's perspective. We realize that not everything turned out the way that Becky had envisioned. There were some hopes and dreams and plans that didn't go the way that she had anticipated. And yet, she made an incredible difference in the lives of so many people. Um, this very small gathering is, is really a microcosm of the multitude of people whose lives she has profoundly influenced. We've come today to express our thanks to God for his gift to us and Becky. We've come to mourn her passing because she's certainly going to be missed. But we're also here to express our faith in God 
who gave his one and only son Jesus for her and for all of us, that through trusting in him we could have eternal life in heaven. And so keeping all of those things in mind, I'd like to invite you to celebrate Becky's wonderful life through this passage of scripture that Beth shared with us earlier, Psalm 23. It begins by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, I want to explore the imagery here because it really helps us to see a variety of the ways that, that Becky has made a difference. Now, first of all, a shepherd did not punch a time clock. It wasn't a seven to three or eight to four, nine to five job. Back in biblical times, shepherds lived with their sheep, even to the point of sleeping in the doorway of the sheep pen so that no wild animals could get in and attack the sheep. The shepherd was always there when you needed him. Now think about that for a moment. Wasn't that true, Becky, for you? She was always there. Um, we could be here for a very long time recounting all of the ways that she has been there for us when she was needed. As a teacher, she was there for her students. As an administrator, she was there for her teachers. As a mentor, she was there to take you under her wing. She was there when you needed her. Now, it wasn't always convenient for her to be that available to everyone. She had a heart of compassion and a willingness to give of herself far above and beyond what was expected. And she did that constantly, consistently for 50 years. Uh, her educational career in, in the Bridgeton School System's history is impressive. Um, she has taught in most of the school buildings, which is a very meritorious accomplishment. Uh, she has done that with an outstanding degree of compassion and passion for teaching, for mentoring, and helping people to achieve their fullest potential. And that did not diminish over that extensive span of time. She lived that out on a daily basis for 50 years. The passion that was in her Now, just as the Lord was a shepherd to her, as she followed him, she tried to be a shepherd to all of those who were in her flock. And the next part of this song gets specific about the ways that the shepherd did that. He brought a great sense of security by his presence and by his efforts. The Bible says he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Um, Sheep are very timid animals, they're, they're easily frightened, and so the shepherd was able to give them a sense of peace and comfort and security. He's able to take gushing mountain streams that posed a threat for safe drinking and, and make them shape, safe for the sheep. He would, he would dig a hole a ways away from the stream, and then he would trench that so that the waters from the free-flowing stream could flow into this little pond that he created, and the sheep could come drink safely. Um, as the evening would come on, uh, he would bring them all together for safekeeping. And he would do the proverbial counting of the sheep, but it wasn't, you know, one, two, three, four, five. He would actually go to each one of the sheep, and he would run his hands along their bodies uh, to make sure that they were healthy and well, that they hadn't broken any bones, that they hadn't gotten any any stickers in them. And this daily massage was just loved by the sheep. And you know, I think about Becky and, and the ways that she interacted with people. Um, and in her own way, this, this safety and security and this, this restoring of souls is something that Becky did. Uh, she was always one to help anyone in need, and that's very apparent from her career in education or from her work with the Cumberland County Child Placement Review Board for over 30 years. But, but let me highlight just some, some, some other ways. Um, she did it through her cooking. Uh, Becky was a great cook. She could make 
anything and everything she made was good. And a particular note that I, I've been told about was her rice pudding. Um, she did it through hobbies, uh, things like playing dominoes or cards or board games. She was a fun-loving person who could make you feel at ease and at home. Uh, she loved shopping and gift giving. Uh, she delighted in holidays. Um, Hallmark stores were a favorite place. And you know, you, you take Hallmark stores and holidays, and the more holidays that Hallmark could invent, the better she, she liked it. Um, and you know, all of that was directed toward us. She was a lifelong learner, uh, a deep intellectual who, who worked to keep her brain sharp um, by reading avidly. James Patterson was a favorite, but she also enjoyed the challenge of solving murder mysteries by stretching her mind and imagination. And of course, she loved Tom Selleck. Um, see the picture here. Um, anyone have any details about that picture where, it, where or how she obtained that? Go ahead. There's a, there's a story behind this somewhere, I know. It's a good one. Uh, we had a 50th um, retirement parade for her, and the staff um, drove by in cars and at, the, at her house, and she came out front, and Carl brought the, can you, can you bring that? Oh, HR did it. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, Appreciate you sharing it. Yeah, HR came by from the school and brought the assigned <laughs> and she kissed it. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> yes. Yes, excellent. Thank you. Um, there was that, that fun loving side to her that we all enjoyed and appreciated. And you know, rootlessness and, and transience are characteristics of our of our modern culture, but um, Becky really worked to give people a sense of rootedness, of belonging. There is a, a connection that you have to the people around you. And, and one of the ways that she did that was telling stories of, of her grandparents' farm and growing up with the animals and, and that connectedness uh, of, of being with the family. And, and you know, if you think about it, she dealt with so many kids whose lives were just going in so many different directions and did not have that sense of rootedness and belonging. And she really worked hard uh, to make that real for the children. Though she never had children of her own, you became her family. And consider how many children whose lives she has touched and influenced in her 50 years as an educator. And, you know, when you begin to, to process those numbers, we start to have an understanding of the great depth of her vast legacy that she has left. For some reason, apples seem to have a connection with teachers, and I'm not quite sure how, how that evolved. But, you know, I, I thought about that the other day, uh, remembering someone, something that someone once told me. Anyone can count the number of seeds in an apple, but only God can count the number of apples in a seed. Anyone can count the number of seeds in an apple, but only God can count the number of apples in a seed. And I thought about that with to Becky. How many apples can one seed produce? The seed's planted, it grows, it bears fruit year after year after year. How many apples does that one seed produce? Only God can tell. Becky Guess was a seed that took root and grew and produced a fruit for 50 How many lives has she, she touched and, and changed? How many people has she influenced for good? It is beyond our ability to really calculate and understand and comprehend that. Only God knows the impact of the wonderful life of 
Becky Cass. She may have made things look effortless, but it wasn't always easy. There were some times where she felt helpless. There were some times of conflict through which she had to lead, knowing that there were going to be people who were upset and who were going to feel hurt. And she was genuinely upset and hurt by that. And she valued the wisdom and the friendship and the honest trust that she had with Beth and Lynn and Arinda. Um, you could have so much fun together, but you can also speak truth to one another and be able to do that with great love and respect and to know that it would be heard in the right way. That was something that she treasured. The ancient song begins a new movement. It's punctuated with a sense of apprehension as the shepherd leads down the dark and difficult path into the valley of the shadow of death. But amid that fear, the composer wove a counterpoint into the melody, showing how the presence of the shepherd brought peace and comfort and strength and even joy. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. And here's where we see the ultimate importance of being able to personally say, the Lord is my shepherd. Becky was an outstandingly good person. But it's not about being a good person. It's about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, we've all failed. We've, we've all messed up. We've all fallen short of heaven. But God, in his great love for us, made it possible for us to belong to him to become a part of his family. And that was something which Becky understood. All those years of dedicated service to our children, to our families, to our schools, to our community, she didn't do those things as a way of trying to be a good person so she could go to heaven, but she did those things because she knew the love of God, the acceptance of God, the joy of God. She already had the assurance that because of her faith and trust in Jesus that he was preparing a home for her in heaven. And all those good things were done out of love and gratitude to this God for the salvation that he's provided for her through Christ. She did them because she recognized that God was doing these same kinds of things for her. The Lord was indeed her shepherd. And through this dark valley, God was leading her home. Home. In his great love for her, God brought her home to heaven. And that's what the next part of this song describes. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Again, the picture here is, is something profound. In, in, back in biblical times, when special guests would come to a home, the head of the house would greet that person for would embrace them and would pour a container of fragrant perfume over their heads as a sign of welcome. And as a way of expressing the idea that everything that I have is yours. All that I am, all that I have, is at the disposal of my guests. And so I have this picture of, of Becky coming home into God's presence. And of God embracing her and saying, Becky, welcome home. Everything I have is yours. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. It's an incredible promise. Becky Getz lived a wonderful life. A life that we can honor and celebrate. A final word. Um, a guy named Paul, who was a 
kind of an ambassador, an emissary for the Lord Jesus, was in prison for his faith in Christ. And he did not know if he would be released or if he would be executed or if he would just be left there. And he wrote to some friends in the city of Philippi. And he ended his letter with these words, which I think are really appropriate as we think of that. He said, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. And whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put this into practice. The God of peace will be with you. Incredible words as we remember the wonderful life of Becky Getz. Whatever is true and noble and right and pure and lovely and admirable, whatever is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Remember these things. He goes a step further. Whatever you've learned, or received, or heard from me, or seen in me, do it. Put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you as you remember and put into practice all of those good things that characterize the wonderful life of Becky Getz. And God's peace will be Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you. Um, we are so grateful to you for Becky, for how she lived, for her love, for her nurture, for her joy and delight. the ways in which she has profoundly touched our lives. We don't want to let her go. But yet we know that she is at home with you. She knows peace and joy beyond anything that you can So we commit her to you. So very grateful for her presence in our lives and for all the love that she has shared with us. And we thank you for her in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Thanks to those of you who participated, very much appreciated. Before we take our leave for Overlook Cemetery, <clears throat> excuse me, we'd like to give each of you the chance to come up and pay your final respects by passing by Becky's casket. Uh, those who have agreed to help us serve as pallbearers will just need your assistance at the cemetery. So you're welcome to accompany your families. We'll travel by procession to Overlook where the final services and interment will take place and we'll use the assistance of the pallbearers there so as you're ready please feel free to come forward and take a few moments before we do head to overlook for the final service 